Hey everybody, welcome back to the third video in the series on uh, ve which vehicle is best for full timing. Uh, today we're going to look at SUVs. Uh, the first video is an intro, second video we looked at passenger cars. Uh, today we'll look at SUVs. We're moving up from the cheapest and smallest and easiest end of the continuum and moving towards them to bigger and, and, and uh, you know, maybe a little more comfortable. Uh, one of the best things about going with an SUV over, uh, you know, a passenger car or some vans is off-road capability. And I don't mean when I say that, you know, crazy off-road into the mud and up the side of mountains and stuff. What I mean is that there's a lot of forest service or BLM roads that you may want to get on and you find that a passenger car or a lot of vans or RVs are just too low they don't have the ground clearance or it's too muddy and you don't dare without four-wheel drive so the four uh, SUV uh, particularly with SUV four-wheel drive you can you can get to more places because you'll have in most of them you'll have uh, four-wheel drive and better ground clearance so your off-road capabilities is definitely one of the big selling points for SUVs in terms of trying to live in a vehicle and choosing it as a, as a vehicle for full timing. Uh, stealth in an SUV can be good as long as you're out of sight. People don't generally uh, assume that someone's living in an SUV, so if you can control the condensation issues, you gotta keep your windows cracked, you know, and if you can use tint and or blackout curtains to give yourself some privacy, you can be pretty stealthy in an SUV, uh, you know, as long as you don't have a lot of stuff outside making it look obvious. Um, it just doesn't look like something somebody's living in. As far as space, you got more room than in a passenger car. Uh, most of the time, there's exceptions. Uh, some of them are pretty small. But in most SUVs, you'll probably end up with a little more room than in a passenger car. So that's good because, again, when you're full-time and everything you own is in the vehicle with you. Clothing, uh, cooking equipment, food, water, and, and so on. So the, a little extra space comes in really handy. Uh, as far as comfort, it's going to be easier to make a decent bed up in most SUVs than it would be in a passenger car. Uh, so you, you get enough room to stretch out and make a bed. Whether you just sleep on a floor or on a mattress, or whether you build in an actual bed with a platform, use a cot, whatever, it's going to be easier in most SUVs than in a car or something. So that does get you a little more room that way. That being said, there are some SUVs that are too short or too small, and you're not going to be able to do that. Uh, unless you're less than average height. <laughs> um, something to think about. So, uh, As far as, as the downsides of SUVs, the bad parts, fuel efficiency in most of them is not going to be as good as in a car. So you're going to take a hit on that if that's a concern to you. I mean, if, you don't, if you're on a tight budget or if you plan on doing a lot of miles, that could be a big issue. Um, there are some that are do remarkably well, but that's not really the majority of SUVs. Uh, so you start getting into hybrids and stuff to get the better fuel efficiency. Uh, but then you're also in a newer, and that, that may be a problem depending on your budget. As far as uh, the space in an SUV is better than a car, but it still is going to be limited compared to a lot of other vehicle options. Uh, so you really kind of have to be a minimalist still. And uh, it, it may be difficult to get a decent comfort level um, and to get a decent bed in some of them. Uh, again, they'll vary depending on the vehicle. Uh, hygiene, like in a car, it can be challenging to deal with personal hygiene in an SUV because you just don't have that much space. Uh, so that can be a challenge for you. Um, and as far as storage, you know, it's basically a, a semi-finished blank shell, so you have to figure out storage. Uh, a combination of duffel bags and plastic boxes usually works pretty well. Um, you just got to work around the size of the vehicle and what fits where you need to put stuff. But if you use those kind of things, it can make the storage go a lot easier and help you stay organized. Because believe it or not, it really is possible to lose stuff in a space as small as a car or an SUV or a minivan. Uh, you wouldn't think it is, but <laughs> if you haven't tried it, but you'll lose stuff. So being able to be organized makes life a lot easier that way. Uh, as far as recommendations on vehicles, you know, there's the import versus domestic dis debate. Uh, Imports in some cases are going to be more reliable long term, but there are there are a few American SUVs that are that are solid and well known, uh, have good track records. So basically, you're looking at a vehicle. You're going to be looking at a balance of the track record of that 
model vehicle as well as the fuel efficiency see how that 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 works out for you and what what's important to you that way uh, domestic vehicles will usually be easier to find parts for in remote areas where if you're doing boondocking that can be an issue i have had par problems finding parts for import vehicles in remote areas of montana or south dakota wyoming or what have you uh, that's something i've actually encountered so I mean, I've been able to get them eventually, but it took longer, and and uh, sometimes I had to pay extra to get things expedited when I broke down. So that is something to think about that way, depending on where you're planning on going. And it's worth considering the size and design before you decide to commit on a SUV to live in. Make sure you've got room, for example, between the back door and the back of the front seats to put a bed in or to sleep in comfortably. Some of them are short enough that you're not going to be able to actually sleep in there without being like curled up or bent or something. Uh, you want to be able to get a comfortable bed in. So check that out before you pull the trigger as well. Uh, but that's about it for SUVs. You know, if you're looking at, at something a little bigger than a car, but you want the off-road capabilities of four-wheel drive and a little more ground clearance, an SUV can be a great choice. If you get up into some of the bigger ones like Suburbans and Yukons, those kind of things, they're pretty spacious. They're going to be at least as spacious as a minivan, uh, if not more so. Uh, so that that's you know they, they can be a viable option. It's not as easy to get in and out of the back as a minivan when you're when you're trying to get in and out because you, you know you're gonna have the seats folded down. Whereas in a minivan you, they're kind of designed to step in and out. Uh, so it's, it's it, you may be a little hard, more challenged that way. But but it can be a good option. Um, and you know and so. Something to think about if you're looking at, if you already got an SUV and you're wondering, can you live in it? Uh, the answer is definitely plenty of people do in, in all man, all sizes, you know, and, and all styles. And uh, it, it's, it's um, you know, definitely workable. And if you want the off-road capability and the gas mileage on the one you're looking at fits your needs, then it can, it can be a valid option. You do have to be a bit of a minimalist because you're only going to carry just so much stuff inside with you and then you start ending up having to use the roof racks or the or a cargo carrier on the back uh, but of course if you start putting stuff on the roof you limit your ability to put solar panels up there which a lot of us rely on as well so so that's about it for suvs thanks for watching hope this video gave you some uh, things to consider that were helpful for uh you know about suvs for full timing and the next video we'll look at pickup trucks uh, both with a shell or a topper or cap, whatever you prefer to call it, and a camper, a pickup truck camper. So we'll look at that in the next video. So until then, we'll uh, see. Thanks for watching, everybody.